Okay, guys. So today we will be discussing dental pulp vitality testing, and we will be emphasizing specifically on the electric pulp testing. Our focus is only on the OSCE exam. We are not going too much in details regarding the uh, theoretical point of view. We will just discuss superficially in a way that how we use it clinically and what are the limitations, how does it function, how we interpret the readings, etc., cetera, et cetera. In endodontics, dental pulp testing as a diagnostic aid is very, very essential. Pulp sensibility tests, such as thermal and electric tests, infer pulp health from sensory responses, but they have certain limitations. Pulp vitality tests like laser Doppler, flumetry, and pulse oximetry, they assess the blood flow. They provide a more accurate health measure. Despite their potential, they are, there are certain practical challenges which prevent the vitality test from replacing the sensibility tests as the clinical standard, though they have a potential. But still, there are some practical challenges. That's why these vitality tests, they have not yet replaced the sensibility tests. All pulp test results must be interpreted carefully to avoid any misdiagnosis and inappropriate treatment patient signs and symptoms and other diagnostic features, including radiographs, the first, the assessment radiograph, pre-endodontic, that these are also very essential. Diagnostic objectives of the pulp testing. So it is an investigational procedure that we have to uh, test the pulp before proceeding for any treatment. Assessment of the pulp health based on its qualitative sensory response and the replication of the symptoms and triggers for pain diagnostic purposes. These are the two diagnostic objectives. So let's see the first one. The assessment of the pulp health based on its qualitative sensory response is commonly done prior to restorative endodontic and orthodontic procedures as a follow-up and for monitoring the pulp after trauma to the teeth and in differential diagnosis, such as excluding periapical pathosis of the pulp origin. Usually question comes that patient comes to you or they can ask you who has abscess. Now, how are you going to diagnose whether it is a periodontal abscess or it is abscess of the pulpal origin? Very simple answer we will go for the electric pulp testing. In case if it is of the pulpal origin, there won't be any response to the electric pulp testing. The reason is abscess will be forming once the pulp is completely necrosed and now there is abscess formation. Remember this thing. Replication of the symptoms and triggers for pain diagnostic purposes. The replication of the symptoms and triggers for pain diagnostic purposes is commonly done to localize the source of pain, like which tooth. At times, the tooth is hot, which we call the hot tooth, and it is very difficult to localize maybe this tooth or that tooth or that tooth, so to localize the source of pain. And secondly, as an aid in excluding non-odontogenic orofacial pain. Pain is being felt in that region, but it could be non-odontogenic. So to exclude that. Pulp testing techniques, the pulp sensibility testing and the pulp vitality testing. Sensibility tests are thermal tests like the cold test and the heat test and electric pulp test as well as the test cavity preparation. Usually question could be asked about this uh, technique as well, the test cavity, what is this? If we are not able to find any uh, solution to the pulp testing and we are not being sure, but we know that probably this is the tooth, then we drill cavity in the target tooth. 
why we do that when it if it is not going to be uh what do you call it uh, non vital patient will start feeling pain after surgery because this drilling is done without local anesthesia patient will start feeling sensitivity or pain so this is the last resort remember this this is not the first test this is not a test being done very uh routinely it is the last resort if everything else is inconsistent then comes the pulp vitality testing laser doppler flowmetry pulse oximetry and other non invasive experimental tests i am not giving the names of those tests over here we will make a different lecture on uh, like another lecture on the total complete uh, different ways of doing uh, pulp vitality testing and various ways so it is going to be covering the theoretical part so it will be a different lecture which will be covering these all uh, different experimental tests as well electric pulp tester this is the electric pulp tester just a uh, an example giving you the example electric pulp testing it is a diagnostic tool which is used to assess the vitality of the pulp tissue within a tooth and its key features it is a portable device it has a digital display then adjustable intensity settings as well the intensity of the current which you will pass then a probe or electrode tip this one and it is battery powered this is can be easily rechargeable using the charger and this is the lip clip which you will apply on patient which will complete the circuit functioning of the electric pulp tester the test and the control teeth so this is the test tooth which is the question uh, the tooth in question which is symptomatic tooth usually a contralateral tooth similar tooth same tooth on the other side we choose that as the control but remember one thing the control tooth should not be already endodontically treated should not be having a crown on it and should not be having a history of some trauma recent at least recent trauma so the test and control teeth should be dried and isolated with cotton wool or rubber nap the letter is applied as a small strips placed between the teeth so you can cut the rubber dam and place between the teeth so that it will be isolated contacts may also be isolated by inserting acetate strips between the teeth acetate strips are those which you use for doing the uh, light cure fillings using the composite so you can also use that to isolate it uh, the to separate the contact areas a conducting medium must be used you apply the you can see it over here it could be a toothpaste a toothpaste gel or a fluoride gel and even the electrocardiogram gel whatever is convenient for you which is readily available you can use that well the pulp tester is applied to the middle third of the tooth avoiding contact with the soft tissues or any restorations but one study suggests that the best placement of the electrode is at the gingival third of the buccal surface of the natural tooth structure so they prefer to take it up because they say that probably the uh, especially in elderly people the corneal pulp is already receded due to the secondary dentin deposition so better to check in this area a lip electrode is placed over the patient's lip if the pulp is vital the patient describes feeling a sensation which is variously described as either tingling uh, sensation vibration pain or a complete like typical electric shock how we are going to read the readings over here this is the area for the readings low reading that is 0 to 3 possible interpretation will be the tooth may be hyper responsive which can indicate inflamed or irritated pulp tissue low reading means hyper responsive tooth 
clinical implications further investigation is required to determine if there is reversible or irreversible pulpitis. Moderate reading is between four to seven. Usually they ask you about reading seven, usually. Possible interpretation is normal response, suggesting healthy pulp tissue, but further action is not required until unless there, is a, there are other symptoms. If there are no other symptoms, then there is no need for any further action. High readings, eight to 10, possible interpretation, diminished or delayed response, which may indicate partial necrosis or early stages of pulp degeneration. Clinical implication, monitor the tooth closely and consider further diagnostic tests or treatment if symptoms persist. Well, if there is no response, means 10 plus or maximum reading, possible interpretation will be no response at the highest setting typically indicates non-vital pulp tissue. Clinical implications, the tooth may require endodontic treatment or extraction depending on the overall diagnosis. <clears throat> Some of the products, they do not follow this zero to 10 readings. They follow zero to 100 readings. So again, just you add the 10 increment like 0 to 30, 40 to 70, 8 to 100, et cetera, et cetera, and beyond 100. Some of the products, they use LED lights. So uh, looking into their uh, user manual, it will be telling you about the red light means there is no response, then yellow light, moderate response, and uh, green light, usual response, et cetera, et cetera. So there are uh, light settings as well. and some of the products, they have audio signals. So light beep, moderate beep, high beep, et cetera, et cetera. Low readings, possible interpretation, the tooth may be hyper-responsive, which can indicate inflamed or it is. So we have discussed about it. We have discussed the moderate reading, four to seven possible interpretation is normal response, suggesting healthy pulp tissue, clinical implications, no further action is required and high eight to 10. No response, we have also discussed about it. Factors affecting EPT readings. To the structure, thick enamel, large restorations, or extra coronal coverage, as well as extra coronal coverage means crown. It could be a metallic crown, it could be all porcelain crown, it could be a zirconia crown, or it could be a PFM. As well as calcified canals can affect the readings. Then patient factors. Patients age, as I told you that in the aged people, the coronal pulp would have been receded and there would be a chance of some uh, secondary or even at times tertiary dentin deposition, then anxiety and threshold for sensation can influence the response. Well, environmental factors like temperature and moisture can impact the conductivity and results. One important thing is recent trauma. Recent trauma can also lead to variations in the response. Usually, after recent trauma, patient does not feel any pain, any sensation in the tooth. So we will take it, we will consider it as the baseline. And when patient comes back after six weeks, so keeping that as a baseline, we again test the vitality of the tooth. And then after three months after six months, we keep on recalling the patient if the symptoms are not appearing and just keeping <clears throat> that tooth under observation. So remember this thing, recent trauma, also chances of no response. Another important factor is if patient has like just a couple of hours ago taken very strong analgesic, it will also affect the EPT readings. Remember these two points as well. Limitations of the EPT. False positive or false negative. EPT is not infallible and can sometimes give misleading results. Supplemental tests would be required like the uh, thermal testing, radiographs, and clinical evaluation for a comprehensive assessment, plus patient's history and history of the present complaint as well. By carefully interpreting EPT readings and considering all the relevant factors, clinicians can make more accurate diagnosis and develop appropriate treatment plans for their patients. 
So over here, we are done with our this important lecture. And soon we will be back with more lectures.